Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this online worship service. Happy Easter. We're very, very glad that you are here. Our Lord Christ went into many different situations. He was sleeping on a cushion in a storm, and the disciples came to him, and they said, What are you doing? And he said, I have no reason for fear. So he made the storm calm. He said, Be still. And he pulled up on shore that very evening, and they pulled up into a graveyard. And one of the scariest humans you can imagine was running around screaming. And he came up to Jesus, threatening. And Jesus said, you need to calm down. And he threw the demons out of this man, and he was in his right mind. He walked up to the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus was dead and had been in there for a time. And they thought, is Jesus in charge of this too? And he said, Lazarus, come out of there. But everyone wondered if he was in charge whenever he went into his own tomb. Many of those closest to him were fearful and were hiding and thought it had come to an end until Sunday when the tomb was found empty and the promises and the prophecies were fulfilled. We, we are in a strange time right now and we don't know what the road ahead looks like. And if we could walk in the shoes of the people that were closest to Christ during his life and his ministry, he would say this, it's going to be okay. I'm in charge. There is nothing that you should fear. And so as we gather together here online to celebrate Easter together, we as a church family across the world celebrate the empty tomb, our freedom from fear, and we look forward to the time when we get to be back together again in the way that we love to be together. We love you. We are glad you're here. Let's worship together. We shall assemble on the mountain. We shall assemble at the throne. With humble hearts into his presence, we bring an offering of song. Yeah. 
your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father praise the son praise the spirit the cross, for even in your suffering you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not be and shall not fade. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me, Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Praise the Father, praise the Son. Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise forever to the King of kings. Good morning and happy Easter. I know we've got people tuning in uh, from all over the place. Uh, our Southside family and other people have just stumbled on to our site um, who are watching with us. And I know also we've got the Church of New Hope is, is tuning in this morning. Uh, we're so glad uh, to have all of you joining us uh, for our Easter service this morning. Uh, one of the things that churches around the world are doing right now this morning uh, is they're hearing their minister or priest or other leader get up in front and as worship opens they hear the words he is risen in so many churches the congregation's response to that is he is risen indeed and i would love to be able to do that with you this morning to get up and say he is risen and to hear your response he is risen indeed uh, and as a, a way of trying to get that accomplished, I thought it might be neat if, if you would leave that in the comments. Uh, if you would write, take a moment, write, He is risen indeed in the comments of this video. And that way we can all see that we're not in this alone, that even though we're separated this Easter, we are celebrating together. We remember that He is risen as a single body, even though we're scattered this morning. So take a moment and do that and encourage one another uh, with those words. He is risen indeed. Uh, I know that this is a strange Easter for all of us. Uh, there are so many things that so, that so many of us do on Easter that we love to participate in, that 
we just can't do this year. Uh, we're missing the Easter egg hunts. Uh, we're, we're missing having extended family come in to join us uh, to go to church together and then to have those wonderful big family Easter lunches as well. Uh, there's a lot we've lost out on and this feels like a really strange Easter. But I do want us to remember that in some ways it really isn't all that strange at all. In fact, there are a lot of similarities between this Easter this year and the very first Easter. That, that very first Easter when the disciples still thought Jesus was dead in the tomb and they encountered him. This utter surprise. And it's one of those stories that we're going to hear. One of those appearance stories where Jesus comes to his disciples and they find out that the story is not over. That in fact, through the power of God and his resurrection, their story continues. Uh, and we're going to read that story right now in John chapter 20. So if you have a Bible, I invite you to turn there now. This is John chapter 20, starting in verse 19. It says, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Lord has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Well, one of the similarities between this Easter and that is that, just like us, the disciples are sheltered in place. They're quarantined. And it's not because of a plague going around. It's, it's because they're afraid. Their leader has been crucified. And the Jewish leaders... Uh, it's, we should assume that they're still looking for those who were involved in Jesus' movement, that they want to weed out everyone who had any participation in this revolution that Jesus was leading. They want to nip that in the bud, and the disciples know this. And so they're afraid. They're terrified. And so they've locked themselves in the room. They're not going out. They're staying in place because... It's not out of paranoia. They, they really are scared and they have good reason to be scared. So like us, they're, they're sheltering in place. But in this moment of fear, Jesus appears to them. He appears to their utter surprise. And even through the locked door, there's this kind of mystery to what happens in this moment. The, the doors are locked and yet somehow Jesus finds a way in. He's just among them. And the first word that he speaks is peace. It's not to chastise them for not having enough faith, for hiding rather than being out in the world and sharing the good news. No, the first word that the risen Lord speaks to his followers is peace. He knows that they're afraid. He knows that they're trying to make sense of everything that's happened over the last couple of days, trying to reset their minds around this new reality they find themselves in. And he knows that more than anything, what they need is to have all that anxiety lifted off their shoulders, to know that there's still hope. And so, and so he says, peace be with you. Uh, one of the things that's been getting me through uh, this, uh, this strange time that we're in uh, is a book called the, the Desert Fathers, Sayings of the Desert Fathers. And you've figured this out by now. I'm kind of a nerd. And so this, this book is from the third and fourth century. And yet it's surprisingly relevant. I, I want to read just a, a part of this to you uh, to prove that it's relevant. Um, it says, a, a brother asked a hermit, what am I to do? My thoughts will not let me sit alone in my room, for even for an hour. He's restless. He goes to someone for advice. 
And that hermit responded, My son, go back and stay in your room. Wash your hands. Pray to God continually. Turn your thoughts towards God. And let no one persuade you to go out of your room. And that is relevant stuff. That's exactly the kind of advice we need right now. Wash your hands. Stay in your room. Well, there's another story in this book uh, that I'm trying to remind myself of right now. It's, it's a story of this old man, man who's in charge of guarding a temple. He, he's, he's the one in charge of making sure that it's kept up and that no one does anything they're not supposed to do in this holy place. Well, one day demons come into the temple and they start messing with the stuff that he's doing. They throw his stuff around and of course he wants to be a good caretaker and so he goes around picking up everything but eventually these demons grab him and they start to drag him out the door and he's afraid that they might get him they might remove him from this this place where he's supposed to be that they might keep him from guarding the temple and so in his panic he he shouts out Jesus save me and the moment he says those words the demons disappear and they they leave him alone and he starts weeping that's when Jesus shows up and Jesus asks him why are you weeping and the man says I just can't believe these demons attacked me like this and Jesus responds yes but the moment you said my name the moment you turned back to me you saw that I was always with you that I was always here by your side and we don't see demons crawling around but the reality is they're, the pre they're present. The, the demons often look like anxiety and fear, worry about what the future holds, stresses about finances, worrying about loved ones that we can't be near who might be vulnerable. There's, there's so much that's attacking us right now. But... But Jesus speaks the word of peace and reminds us to turn to him even as those concerns assault us. Jesus is already in the room speaking peace and driving those fears away. So Jesus speaks peace to the disciples and it's his first word to them. But it's not his only word. He, he goes on from there. He doesn't just offer them peace. He also offers them purpose. He breathes the Holy Spirit into them. That in this moment where they're hiding in fear, he offers them peace so they're not afraid anymore. But it doesn't just stay there. He, he calls them out into this, his, this work. He he breathes the very spirit that he received at his baptism and that has empowered all of his work. He breathes that same spirit into his disciples, the same spirit that he is one with. As the Son of God, he is one with the Father and the Spirit. That, that spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, the disciples now receive and they receive it in order to continue the work that Christ began. There's a mission here. And it's a mission that all of us are given the moment we're baptized. In fact, there are some churches where when people are baptized, they come out of the water, the priest or minister will breathe on them. And this reminder that now that you've participated in the death and resurrection of Christ, you receive the peace, you receive salvation, but it's more than that. You receive the Holy Spirit so that you can partake in the work that God is doing to remake the world. Because that's one of the things that God has continually done. He, whenever God wants something done, he, he breathes. In Genesis 2, when God makes Adam, it says he breathed his life into him. He formed him out of the dirt. He's just a dirt clod until God breathes into him. And then in the prophet Ezekiel, we read about the dry bones, this valley of dry bones, this vision that, that Ezekiel has. 
And he wonders, can these bones live again? And God shows up and it says that he breathes life into these dry bones. These, these bones that have no life whatsoever in them. They could not be more dead. But by the breath of God, suddenly something new is born. Something is remade from the depths of death. And here again, God is doing something new. Jesus breathes. God breathes into the disciples. And now his resurrection power belongs to them. Now they are agents of resurrection. They, they participate in the world doing God's work. They are agents of God's hope and renewal. The language that Paul uses in 2 Corinthians is that we are now ministers of reconciliation. That is what they have become the moment that Jesus breathes on them. And so it's not just peace that Jesus offers. It's also purpose. It's, it's peace for a purpose. They carry the peace of Christ with them so that fearlessly they can engage in the work that God has given them to do. And of course, we've received that same purpose to church. I don't know if you've noticed, there are a few times when a word that's a noun becomes a verb. Uh, the best example of this is Google. It used, back when the internet started, Google was just a noun. It was the name of the site where you would go and look up things. But of course, now everyone uses it as a verb. Well, if you want to know something, go and Google it. And I can't help but feel that this Easter, Easter has become not a noun. It's transitioned from being a noun to being a verb. That when we speak of Easter this year, this year especially, that what we're describing is not so much the holiday where we all gather and worship together, that event that we could call Easter. Rather, Easter this year is a verb. Easter is the work of the church in the world that needs help and peace. That the church, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that Christ breathes into us at our baptism, we are now about the work of Eastering the world, of announcing the hope and promise of the resurrection that is making all things new. And there are so many ways that that looks. Just the experiences I've had in the last few weeks, I, so many of you have reached out. I've gotten phone calls. A few of you have sent encouraging cards to me and my family. There was an apple pie on our front porch one night. And, and I think about the work that just in my neighborhood, our neighbors on either side of us, our friend Jasmine, who many of you know, who's, who's a part of our church now, works at a nursing home and she's she's caring for some of the most vulnerable people and, and some of you have been with my wife Kristen as she cares for you uh, during this time when many many of the patients that she has are so vulnerable because of immune issues well it's the work of God and then just this week our other neighbor Ruth has decided to encourage our our postal worker uh, woman named Nina who comes and delivers our mail every day. She, I, saw, I got to watch her give her a hug and watch Nina just break down in tears for that encouragement as she tries to continue her, her work through the fear of, of getting sick herself or passing it on as she delivers the mail. And so, so Ruth decided to encourage her by decorating mailboxes in our neighborhood. That's the work of God. That's that's the Spirit of God moving us towards love and hope and peace. It's, it's what it looks like to Easter the world. That's what it looks like for resurrection to become not just an event in the past, but something that occurs even now today. An ongoing process in which God is making all things new. We are participating in that even now. 
and especially now. When so many are in need and scared, we carry the peace of Christ with us for the purpose of sharing the good news that he is risen and that there is nothing really to be afraid of. Because in Christ, he has accomplished all. He is making all things new. And so we continue to love one another well. We continue to do the work we have always done as a church. Because this is what it means to be an Easter people. We have peace with a purpose. Blessings on you as you go about the work that God has given all of us to do and know that it's the work of God that you're doing, that it's by the power of the Holy Spirit moving through you that you do these good works. May the peace of Christ continue to be with us so that the purposes of God might continue to be worked out in us. Amen. There's a stirring deep within me. Could it be my time has come? When I see my gracious Savior face to face when all is done, is that his voice I am hearing? Come away, my precious one, is he calling me? Is he calling me? I will rise up, I'll rise up, then I'll bow down, bow down, lay my crown up at his presence. Savior, face to face when all is done, is that his voice I am hearing, come away my precious one, is he calling me, is he
ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was a Hi, we're the Woodhouses, and uh, we are so delighted uh, to share Easter morning with you. Uh, the Lord is risen, and uh, we're going to take the Lord's Supper together uh, by partaking of the bread and the and the fruit of the vine. And Deb's here on my right, and Aiden on my left, and it's a joy to be here. Um, I know we're in many, many different places, and uh, I miss you, and uh, wish I could see you. Uh, in other ways other than Zoom and other ways that we communicate, but delighted that we can do this uh, in these days so that we can share this time together. Considering Easter and its significance in the Christian calendar, there is no more important holiday, if you wish to call it that, than Easter. Because it is on Easter Sunday, the morning that Jesus arose from the dead, that we have the hinge of history. We have the defeat of death and the affirmation of life and the enthronement of Jesus as King. And that is something we celebrate every Sunday, but especially on this day that we know was around this time of year, around the Passover time when Jesus instituted the Supper. When he instituted the Lord's Supper, before he did that, there was something very significant that happened. It's written about in John chapter three. He took each of the apostles and he washed their feet. In the days of the first century traveler in Palestine, it was not uncommon for people to be in sandals uh, if they weren't barefoot, but they would be in sandals and you had dusty roads and people needed their feet washed when they entered a residence. It would be considered really bad form and bad manners if no one washed your feet when you entered the room. But when they all gathered in the upper room to take the Lord's Supper together for the Passover, which he would transform into the Lord's Supper, he did the amazing thing of stripping to the waist, getting a bowl of water and a towel and washing each of the apostles' feet. It was so shocking to Peter probably the chief of the apostles, that he initially refused to allow Jesus to do that. He said, God, don't do that. It was, uh, it was a weird moment for him. And so Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you can't have any part in this coming kingdom because this coming kingdom is about ministry and love. And he was about to give his body and his blood for the people of the world. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
So it wasn't when we were friends and it wasn't when we knew and understood Jesus that Jesus died. He came and gave us his body and his blood when we didn't understand. He understood, but we were surprised on Easter morning to learn that he had won the victory over death. And so we celebrate his resurrection, his death and resurrection every Lord's day. So we're gonna take this together. Let's bow together as we pray for the bread. Father in heaven, we thank you for the many blessings we have, but this most special blessing, the body of Jesus. We pray that as we take his body, I pray that you will take us to the cross to see the sacrifice made for us to atone us from sins and to give us victory over death. In Jesus' name. If you need more time, you can pause right here if you'd like. Jesus also gave us his blood to prove that he was dead a Roman soldier, came to the cross and thrust a spear in his side and water and blood came out and our salvation was secured. The blood flowed then, and ever in the mind of God, the blood flows now. Let's bow again. Father in heaven, thank you for the blood of Jesus, which atones us of our sins, sets us right before you, and gives us such a joy. Father, it was in the midst of his pain that he shed his blood. When he was scourged, when the crown of thorns was raked on his head, when his hands and feet were pierced, he shed blood. Father, that blood also signifies his life force given to us because of your love for us, Lord, and because of his love. And I pray that you'll bless this cup now as we take it together. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to show you some pictures of our church family now, and I hope that you enjoy um, looking at all these faces that are still familiar to us of people we love. The Lord prayed for all of us to be one and to discern the body today. Well, we're going to discern the body by seeing some uh, Easter pictures of our friends and our family at Southside. Hey, Southside. We have sure been enjoying the extra cuddles that we get on Sunday mornings now. But we miss everybody. We hope to see you soon. Bye. Southside, we miss you guys. Um, happy Easter. Looking forward to rejoining everyone someday.
Hey Southside, from our little yeah, backyard Georgia. farm to you, we, we miss, miss you. you. <laughs> Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the Ancient of Days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the Ancient of Days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory, every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God. And your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be to the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory, every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth, sing to the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless worth, sing to the ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth, Sing to the ancient of days, for none can compare to your matchless worth. Sing to the ancient of days, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory, every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. O oh, ancient of days, O oh, ancient of days, O oh, ancient of days, O oh, ancient of days. Do you ever worry? I know when there is change, the unknown, and problems crop up, we tend to worry. Am I gonna get the coronavirus? Is someone I love gonna get the coronavirus? Am I gonna have a job? Is my IRA gonna go away? Is my salvation good even when I can't meet with other Christians on Sunday morning? Well, I know that our God gave us a salvation that is bigger than any obstacles are problems that can be in the way. I don't worry about death. Matter of fact, sometimes I eagerly anticipate the Lord coming again. But I do worry at times. And I know that the first Sunday that we didn't meet together, and I saw that our contribution was only a fraction of what it normally is, I worried. And it's amazing how many trash thoughts can come in your head in just such a short time. Are we gonna to have to stop our mission work? Will we be able to pay our ministers? Will we not be able to pay our bills if they cut off our electricity? How embarrassing for Southside. Well, that's, that's really crazy thinking because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Did I just hear Tom Williams say amen? The reality is that since that Sunday, the contributions increase a little bit each week as people figure out 
and adjust to the new way that we have to worship. We also received some special gifts in March that allowed us to finish the month in the black. But one thing I do know, I know that Southside has always stepped up to take care of the needs, whatever they are, whether they were local or far. And I know that those who are able to increase their contribution will increase their contribution. And those that need to figure out how to get their contribution to Southside will go online and find out how to do it electronically, or they'll mail it in, or have somebody come pick it up. I don't have to worry about things like this. Matter of fact, Southside is doing so well right now. It is amazing how healthy Southside is. I hear stories of people busy making masks, cooking meals and delivering them, carrying care packages, making phone calls, Zoom videos with people who can't be there, and even kids who can't go to their Bible class may find a chalk picture on their sidewalk out front. And if you go online, you can hear an encouraging song, hear a scripture read, or even a poem. There are so many good things that are happening out there right now as our ministers work feverishly to keep us together and keep us connected. I do know that there's one admonition I can give you is when you do worry, go to Matthew 6, 25 and read it and read it again. God does know who we are. He does know what he needs and he does love us. Would you bow with me and let's say a prayer. God, you are a great God. You are a glorious God. You're a God who knows our needs and you're a God who knows how to calm our worries. And you are a God who loves us and saves us. Thank you for the salvation that you've given us through your son. I know that there are those who are fighting illness right now, Lord, and I pray that you would extend your hand and personally intervene. We pray, Lord, for the total and complete healing of all those who are battling illness. And though there are those out there that are suffering from physical injury, and we pray that their mending will come quickly and completely. And we have those that are suffering from loneliness and depression. We pray, Lord, that you'll send the Holy Spirit to strengthen and comfort them in their times of need. We pray, Lord, that you'll heal the nation, that you help us to turn back to you and learn to love you and appreciate all that you do for us as individuals and as a nation. Lord, we pray that you'll help us to adapt to the changes and learn new ways to serve and glorify you. Bless those who are working so hard to care and love those in need. And Lord, comfort those who are separated from their loved ones during these tough times. Lord, help us keep our focus on you rather than on the problems. And help us to avoid worry as you wrap us in your loving arms and give us the comfort and strength that only can come from you. We pray all this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Be safe, be well, and we love you.